everybody, and welcome to Red Wings Rant, where tirades and impassioned pleas for your Detroit Red Wings finally have a home today. You've got, unfortunately for you, a heavy dose of Matt. Uh, that's right. Matt is, uh, he's flying solo today. So, uh, Jared throwing it out there. The Matt Show. Chewy, also a Matt. What is going on, Schuster? Um, well, we're not, we're flying high with, with the Matt Show, but we're not, fly, we're not flying high with, uh, the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, we're, we're going to, we're going to make ourselves feel better. Uh, we're going to take a look at a couple of, um, prospects in the Red Wings system to make us feel just, just a teensy bit better. Uh, today, because of course, as I titled the episode, uh, Red Wings playoffs hopes, uh, hope playoff hopes dwindling after crushing loss to the Washington Capitals. Uh, what, uh, some have been able to calculate, uh, if you're willing to, uh, let that slide a calculation and not by the eyeball test. Uh, some have calculated, the game with the most meaning so far this season. Uh, essentially, what they were calculating was who would have a greater chance of making the playoffs by the end of this game. And based on all of the different results that could have happened, I guess, talking three, um, <laughs> it's going to be, uh, or no, wait, uh, we have four, right? We have an overtime win or regulation win for each one of those teams. Uh, but uh, depending on how that turned out, you had a swing of about 27%, which was the largest swing uh, any two teams could carry throughout one single game. And uh, what you got uh, out of that was a hell of a game. Uh, I'm going to adjust my camera here, especially since I'm the only one here. I feel like I should try and make sure it's in a good spot. Uh, look, I uh, I wanted to bring it up like this. These two things... They're not the same. And uh, for podcast listeners, it is uh, six to one is what I'm showing against the Ottawa Senators and uh, four to three to the Washington Capitals. These things are not the same. We are a year separated, uh, more than a year separated. So there's a couple things to talk about there uh, from this debacle, from what absolutely crushed us. And for sure, if you're a Red Wings fan, you could go ahead and say, you know what? Back it up. Back it up to the beginning of this month. We couldn't find a win. That's what's comparable to this Sens game. Fine. You can make that argument. What I'm here making the argument is the Red Wings were in the game. For the second time in us being a podcast during the Iserplan era, they were in the game where you were making or breaking what the definition was for the rest of your season as my two-year-old tries to break into my office. Um, we can't, he can't get in. He hasn't figured out uh, the child locks on it yet, so I'm I'm safe. He can't get me. Um, and you got a better you got a better game. Is that is that fair to say? Today, my podcast partner, like it was a couple weeks ago, uh, is y'all when we were doing the. Uh... Oh shoot. I'm hearing some screaming and some crying uh, when we were doing the uh, live trade deadline uh, recap. I'm really distracted right now. Uh, so I need to hear from you guys what you think about this. I know last night we were we were down. We were sad. And uh, you should you should have been. You're a Red Wings fan. But do we all agree? This is these are two different things. This is not the same. Ketzel thrown out there. All right, I'm here. Appreciate it, Ketzel. I do I do need all you guys as my backup today. Uh, Debbie thrown out there. Debbie Susan. Debbie, good to have you. You lose to the Caps. Great point by Debbie, and I want to hear what you guys think about this too because I think Debbie's point is, hey, you've got some games coming up that you could have marked down even at the beginning of the season. Loss. And you just wasted an opportunity, went to overtime with the team you needed to beat, and you didn't win. So Debbie throws out there, yeah, and next, Carolina, Florida, Tampa. Not looking good. I hear you. But I think, I think I'm, I'm maybe I'm trying to make this look better than it was. Because we've all been trying to say, right? Like, has this been, I saw this on Twitter earlier today, or X. 
Is the season a failure? Is it a failure if you don't make it to the playoffs? I don't think you feel good about it. Anybody who's watching this and is like, oh, eyes are playing. Just nailed it. I don't feel that way. But the Red Wings brought it last night to Washington. They did not give up in that game. And they were out shooting Washington. They came and gave Washington the best that they could. In a losing effort, nobody said that this team was perfect. Back to the point of, oh, you're not expected to make it to the playoffs this year. But uh, you br- you brought it. You were challenged. Your your coach got your team ready. Your best players came to play. Alex DeBrinkett gets off the schneid with a five-on-five five freaking goal. Patrick Kane came to play for sure. Um, it was a hell of a game. All right. <laughs> We got to, we got to jump back in the comments. Um, Caden <laughs> thrown out there. We actually outshot a team again. Yes, that that's where I'm landing. They they brought it. They brought their A game. Um, decoy love this point. I want to come back to this later in the episode. Decoy throws out there. It's only two points, and we play them again. Chill. Decoy love this point. I I I would I would bring up. Let's not forget how terrible for stretches Washington has been this season. Let's not forget how terrible Detroit has been this season. And has looked like, go back to the end of February, beginning of March. We looked awful. We weren't that last night. No way, shape, or form were we that team last night. Isn't that what we're asking for? That's what we want. So, point being, it's only two points. We only play them again. We didn't look awful. We bring this game for the rest of the season. That's an improvement. Maybe it's not a win, like over failure, but that's an improvement. Because what the Red Wings could have surely done is won last night. And we have these three tough games that Debbie just brought up. How good are you going to feel? Not that you're, you know, you would trade a win for a loss last night. But this could easily just be, based on what we've seen with the Wings and their stretches this year, This could have been a win followed by 10 straight losses. So this game wasn't everything. And you were asking this team not to get blown out. That's my point. And they did not get blown out. They gave you a hell of a hockey game. I was on the edge of my seat the entire time. They didn't feel like either. Like we locked out into a couple of goals to tie things up. We had the lead going into the third. We blew it. But we had the lead. We were scoring throughout. It was, a, it was a hell of a first period to come out of that first tied. Oh man, that was, that was, that was fun to watch. I thought those first five minutes were easily Detroit 15 minutes. Then Washington definitely started to turn the tide. They were taking over the momentum. Second period, great period for Detroit. Third period I thought was even. And we were finally putting pucks in the back of the net. Um, That was fun. It was a great game. And at no point did you feel like oh, I can't watch this anymore. Did it, it never felt like, I mean, I, I would even say since we walk away out shooting Washington, if you want to say that it was an even match, if you want to say we outplayed Washington, such a vast, tremendous improvement from last year. Oh, Jared thrown out there. Those cries are for wings playoff chances. They, they certainly are. Those, uh, the dropping chances hurt. Uh, decoy wants to know where's sloth today. You know, you count on a guy, you bring him along, you say, this is my podcast partner. And, uh, and then he bails on you. You get, you know what guys, we're all friends here. He get, he gave me the horse. S H I T. My kids are right outside the door. He's like, Oh, Oh, I forgot. I had a concert tonight. Who forgets that you have a concert tonight? Don't give me that. Tell me. You were, you didn't want to, you, you, oh, I, I just don't want to have to tell Matt the bad news. That's what's going on. We all know what happened, Mike. I'm, I'm, I'm alone again. So I'm calling you out. I'm allowed to call you out every time I'm left alone here. Um, Dan B, I hope priority garbage will survive without the playoffs exposure. And they thought they were, they thought they were getting three weeks ago. Um, fun game. I like to go into priority and see which Instagram comments, uh, or I'm sorry, which Instagram posts they forgot to uh, shut down the comments. And you just go tell priority what a 
what a sack of garbage they are. Um, eventually, they will shut down the comments. Uh, they have a they have a team that's not quite on it. They miss it every now and then, but uh, that's my challenge to all the Red Wings uh, rant listeners out there. Go find priority garbage. Send them a message. Tell them to get off my jersey. Um, why not? They'll probably enjoy the actual like they'll they'll probably jump up in the algorithm. So if you think it's like bullying uh, someone in social media, it's going to help. So, they'll, you know, go up the the rankings there. They'll actually serve it up organically. Uh, Dixon thrown out there. You got to win two of the next four it becomes a mission impossible. Cop is our cruise. Oh, man. Putting it all on cop. I, I will say when uh, I'm going to pull up. um you know, we could we could take a look at some of the stats now. Um, let's see if I can resize this. So you guys can actually read it. Um, what we saw yesterday, uh, we've pulled these up before. These are from hockey stat cards. Uh, so every all the podcast listeners, we are we are pulling up this beautiful bar graph. Uh, if you are a analytics truther, we we know the Red Wings played a good game, but also. You can add to your your argument, to your evidence. If you buy the eyeball test for like Red Wings played a good game last night, um, you could say, hey, there happened to be this bar graph that also backed that up. Um, but <laughs> uh, Dixon, to your point of throwing cop in there. Um, now, I'm not blaming anything on cop. I thought all around it was a pretty good game. But what we have seen in our victories recently is the Andrew Cop, Christian Fisher, Michael Rasmussen line um, making us feel pretty good. And uh, last night they were definitely like what what you the way you guys want to take a peek at this is that this was this was negative offense that Cop Fisher and Rasmussen were bringing to the ice. And ultimately, what we've been getting are some pretty good chances from that line. Like whatever you want to say, skill wise. They usually bring it. They usually have a pretty good looking chance. And what they're showing off here is not great. I should probably pull down the overlay so you guys can actually read. Maybe if I shrink it a little bit. Yeah, there we go. So <clears throat> the individual offense from Christian Fisher, good. The individual defense from Andrew Kopp, okay. It's while they were on the ice as a line trying to work things out was not going great. Um, mentioned it before Patrick Kane, Alex to bring it on the top of this list, man, did they bring it yesterday? Uh, to bring it was a part of a couple of terrible turnovers that led to a couple of goals. One of them being in overtime. Um, but to bring it played such a great game. You, it, it, it like completely erases anything bad that happened based on this graph. So again, we knew we, we saw the plays that happened. So Let's get that out of the way again for all of our analytics truthers out there. I love you. Please don't leave my show. Um, so we, you know, coach isn't going to ignore the blatant mistakes, but he played such a great game that he brought so much to the ice. He could have turned it over a couple of more times. Just so happened, you know, the puck hit the back of the net specifically on those turnovers. Um, any hoozles. <laughs> I uh I am I am pretty happy again with uh the game that the Red Wings brought last night. And I and I, I really do feel like that's that's the definition. That's the um to to go back to how I kind of started this was like is it a failure if we don't make it to the playoffs? That's the question I've been seeing online today. And it's it's coming up because you just lost a game that could have completely swung your odds to make it to the playoffs back in your favor pushing the Capitals out of a playoff spot with a win last night, and you didn't do it. Season's not over, but I think the, the start to this conversation makes sense now. But I think what you want this team to do is bring to the ice what they brought last night. And you're hoping they bring it in a few more games here coming up that we'll take a look at in a second. The likes of the Florida Panthers, Carolina Hurricanes hitting your schedule. It's not anything you're ever excited about especially with the Panthers looking close to the most solid, complete team. The Carolina Hurricanes, who have been lacking scoring, and pull in Jake Gensel, who's... I was wrong. 
I said I would be afraid to to bring in Gensel because I I thought his numbers were always just you know he's surrounded by uh, two of the greatest forwards I, I I think of all time, namely you know most of the time Crosby, but uh, no, he went over to Carolina and. What was it? Eleven points in his first seven or nine games. This guy's killing it. Huge dum dum right here. Uh, uh, I was a Jake Gensel truther. Totally wrong. Uh, Dixon throw it out there. How is Sprague still scratched? Well, uh, Mr. Cider, I'll I'll call you that, Dixon. Uh, Mr. Cider, just so you know, Sprague would have been even deeper on this uh, hockey stat card from yesterday because he 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 does not. Uh, he does not play great defense. Um, I do. I, I actually think it's like a pretty. It's a pretty gutsy choice. And I would say too, like the guy who's in would be Charnik. And he's playing on a line yesterday that I, I, I thought really killed it. So I'm totally fine with it. I get what you're saying. I've kind of said all season, like, let's remember Sprung is successful in a bottom six role. That also means he's super replaceable. That also means maybe his role is a little bit different from being the guy who you can count on to get a breakaway goal, uh, which you can't really count on, but he's done it a few times. Um, he's not going to catch up to what his season point per game total was. He won't catch up to his season totals in the past. Um, this is something where Sprong is kind of turned off. And what never turns off is his abilities on defense. So when his offense turns off, his abilities on defense don't. Um, I would argue you have a pretty easy decision. Uh, I'm about, let's see, 10 minutes behind here on, on comments. Uh, Chewy thrown out there. Still got a point. Uh, decoy. Spring has sprung. Dixon. Got to assume no extension for him. I think you're absolutely right there, Dixon, on the sprung conversation. Jim Johnson. Hell of a stat here. 0-6-1. In our last seven road games, that says it all. It's a great point. Um, there's no like, oh, you got to win. You know, I'm not going to say like, oh, you got to win some on the road. Actually, all you got to like, just be like 400 right now. Uh, don't absolutely blow it at the start of the month and don't have December. But that. This does start to paint a picture. This entire offseason, the storyline we're going to be talking about is how do you build depth in this team? Remember the team that did not need to trade for depth, according to Steve Eiserman. Those are just facts. Just hey, I, I saw I saw the Discord today. Uh, the discourse today, not Discord. Uh, however, join the Discord. Join the Discord. Saw the discourse today. How could you ever challenge the Iser plan? Let's say I'm not doing that. I'm just calling out facts. Steve said. We don't need depth. However, when we lost Dylan Larkin, we couldn't not only we couldn't win a game, couldn't win a game. We won one. We got we got one. We got one. We did it. We got one. No, and we, we got our asses absolutely handed to us. But no, we don't need depth. We didn't need to make a depth trade. We're good. <laughs> yep, we're good. Um, infallible general manager. Mr. Steve Eiserman does no wrong. Sorry. Hey, again, what did I just, all I said, he does no wrong. And I called out some facts. He said, we don't need depth specifically in his post trade deadline interview. And when we lost one guy, the team couldn't win. I'm just saying that's what happened. But you're going straight to hell. If you ever, if you ever challenge Steve Eiserman. Straight, straight to jail. Straight to jail. All right. Anyway, you guys are so silly with that stuff. Um, not you guys. You guys are actually pretty great. I, I like to feel like I can bring that up in the show and our normal listeners get it. Like, it's like, yeah, it's okay to challenge your GM, especially when he says you don't need depth. You lose one guy and the team can't win a game. You know, sometimes. Uh, maybe if he didn't believe that, uh, wasn't smart enough to not put his foot in his mouth. Uh, Jared thrown out there. Losing one player shouldn't mean automatic loss. Bingo. Jared, you're the man. Um, let's, so I guess the, the point I was coming to there, have I, have I like landed on a single point yet, especially without Mike being here? Uh, the point, 
<laughs> the point I was coming to was just look there 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 was magic and fun to be had here. Uh, I'm talking about how they they do have a Dylan Larkiny team last night. They have a pretty solid game last night. I think that's what you wanted to see. But I I think it's pretty clear. Um, Sprong's not your answer. Having this balanced lineup completely dependent on health also was not your answer. They desperately, desperately need some more top six talent to make sure that this team just doesn't get absolutely buried. I think there's an easy, very easy solution defensively. And they're kind of fixing some of it, actually, because Jeff Petrie seems to have some of his problems fixed. Besides shooting the puck at an empty net, besides being able to be aware enough to see an empty net, besides that, Jeff Petrie playing with Simon Edmondson is fixing a lot of problems. I'm going to throw that out there. We'll get to a, a stat here in a second, a stat card that you guys can actually ooh and ah at, I hope, because it shows it's actually a pretty good choice to have Simon playing with Petrie. I still think he's got to go. That's the easy fix. The huge fix here is that we can't we can't go another season talking about how Moritz Sider is deployed and that's why his statistics are so terrible. We can't go another season having that conversation. That has nothing to do with Moritz Sider. That has everything to do with the depth on this team that we were told is fine. That this team didn't need an upgrade at the trade deadline. It has everything to do with that. You got to be able to put Moritz Sider in a space to succeed. And I don't think that's on the defensive side. I think we need more top end talent. And I love Patrick Kane. But if you're watching him, and you are thinking this is any part of a long-term solution, you are nuts. I want him signed next year. I think Moritz Sider has potential to be a Norris candidate in the next couple of years. I really do. But this team has shown you with one injury, with Moritz Sider's statistics. We need some more help. And as much as it's easy to just go ahead and say, well, Moritz Sider's in the defensive end against the top end talent, I think you got to take that next step. I think I don't I don't think the problem is just solved by having a deeper defensive core because those shots are still going to be peppered on your goaltending, which you also don't have a solid goaltender to rely on. I hate to say it, but I think the answer is we need more forwards for a team. That is top 10 in goal scoring this year. I think we're seventh. We're number one in finishing, which Jared shared with me an awesome stat, which I was too dumb to put in my slides. Uh, I'm making a huge point here, and I have a tiny little head on the screen. Maybe I could do it like this. I think you need more top end talent. You got to keep that puck in the offensive zone. You need sustained pressure. We've talked about it all season, how the shooting percentage is insane. We showed you guys about a month ago, how the Red Wings are actually far and away the best low danger shooting percentage team in the league by a few percentage points. You don't, you don't, make it to the playoffs you don't win playoff games with that you win with s sustained pressure which i don't believe they have a way of doing that and as much as i love patrick kane i think it's pretty obvious you could see the way he moves like that's the guy is just so goddamn good he works through his ability you know to not skate great right now <laughs> um so it's not anything against patrick kane all these comments are not against more insider they're just saying we we've talked about balance this whole season and how perfect things need to be to be lined up. But I think, I think the next step is getting somebody alongside whatever we're doing with um, the center or left wing. I think ultimately you're either, you either need to focus on making JT Comfort's job easier by having a great right wing and a left wing on either side of him, which when he played with Patrick Kane and to last night, it looked pretty great. 
or you've got to add another piece to play alongside, like you're focusing this way, or you've got to add another piece to play alongside Lucas Raymond. <sighs> it's tough to put a finger on which direction I'd want to lean because I really do like the way Debrinkit, Larkin, and Kane look. And I'd really like to find a way to never see Lucas Raymond, JT Comfort, David Perron again. But David Perron scores last night. That does not belong in my playoff contending team. Okay, again, one another 10 minutes. Um, let's, let's, let's jump back in. Uh, Jared, uh, Jared thrown out there. Is Justin Hall uh, still alive? Are we? Who would check on him? His family? His family. Okay, yeah. Um, Chewy was hanging out with Vladdy. Chewy sent over some Vladdy picks. God damn it. I got to check that out. Let's see if maybe I, all right, maybe I, I'll, I'll, I'll check it while we're, we're doing something here. Um, decoy Mike's at, uh, the RuPaul concert. Is that, is that what's going on tonight? I will say normally, um, which I wouldn't, that would actually be a hell of a show. If you could imagine like the pomp and circumstance, um, Mike, you just told me he had a concert tonight. I, I don't know where he's at tonight. Um, Dad B, this team doesn't need depth. It needs a true superstar too. No, and Dad, you're you're right. I, I the word choice is always going to get folks in trouble when you're talking about how to improve a hockey team that um, loses one player and can't keep its head above water. Um, but I think you could accurately say some top six depth. Like, I, I think, Dan, that's that's where I want to land. Like, it, we're not talking about, I'm not talking about fortifying the middle pair defense, which actually looks pretty good when Simon Edmondson's out there. I'm I'm talking about, let's let's get this figured. We, we need, if this, if this is about, you know, we, we are going to bring back, bring back Patrick Kane next year. We're going to rely on the chemistry between Debrinkit and Kane. We need a, a solid center between them. That's not even what I'm talking about. I do think I do think you're right, Dan. Um, I need I need a player that I, we're talking about next year where it's like 10 mil. You want to put that on the books? Like that's that's where we're at, and we're getting to that point where uh there's some contracts on these books right now we're we're i we said it it's gonna become a problem with some of these contracts we've signed um but i think you're right dan um i think we need another guy that's getting paid in the the dylan larkin range and is not mo cider or lucas raymond um look at these teams that are at the top of the league right now like i get it I, I I do not want to be a team like the team that overpays for a Reinhardt, but they have so much going on in that top six. He's walking away with 50 goals. Right. Do, do you do you think JT Comfer's walking away with 50 next year? Nope. Let's not forget that him and Copper also passed that point of like, oh, they're in the decline of their career as the average hockey player starts to decline after 28. So we're, there's that we got to deal with. That's a whole nother conversation. But Dan, I, I think you're 100% right. And if if it's about word choice, absolutely. But I didn't need a bottom six. I didn't need another like, oh, we need a seventh defenseman in case somebody gets hurt. No, no, that was fine. Anybody, I've sorry for hockey players out there. I'm going to say it that the margin there you get in the bottom six, you're talking about your bottom pair defenseman. You talk about your seventh defenseman. That margin there is like razor thin. In my opinion, it's the guys that are the outliers, the guys that are just like the Patrick. I mean, my God, Patrick Kane, one of the, the, the greatest American hockey player, if I may, especially with what we've seen now that he has an aged body, a broken down body, and he still can do it. He does. And I want him back next year. Don't you dare take my words and twist them on me. 
and look what he could still do. I would say imagine Patrick Kane younger, but of course we got to see that for so many years and it made us sad. So I don't want to remind you of that. But anyways, Dan, I think you're right. Word choice is very important there. Um, Chris Rich. Uh, the more Cider draft. Here's, here's uh, Christopher, uh, Christopher J. Rich. Good to have you, Chris. I, I don't think... Uh, I don't think I've, I've seen you here. This definitely looks like a new avatar, but uh, good to have you on the show, Chris. Hopefully we could get a subscription out of you and uh, a like. Um, of course, just the YouTube subscribe. Nothing to pay for. Um, the Mort Sider draft has 50% carried Eisman into fans believing his knowledge. When does this fizzle out? Compares to the Jadavian Clowney hit on that Michigan running back. Woo! Oh, man. I think he just got a new contract today too with the Panthers. Um I I want to be so particular with my word choice especially since Dan B called me out. <laughs> I want to be so particular. In no way am I saying to fire Steve Eiserman. But you guys are cuckoo pants. Who's ever out there saying that he's doing a perfect job? Who's ever saying trust the Iser plan in the sense that you better not challenge anything he's done. And you might not be that person. Don't take offense to this comment. If you're not that person, if you're like, no, you could totally challenge him. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do it. High five. But if you're cuckoo pants, your name's Darren McCarty. And when somebody says, what about this move? And your response is trust the Iser plan. And then you light up another doobie. That's right. I said doobie. I'm old. If that's your response. You're a fool. You're an absolute fool. You're wasting your time by analyzing the sport. We don't need you. Have a nice day. But I think a lot of you are out there. You're on the same side of, as me. Now, this is this is an episode I started with, like, there's silver linings here. We didn't do the 6-1 to one loss like we did to Ottawa. This is very different. But I think it's not a coincidence that every episode now since we started our losing streak, we get into these conversations because this is the same thing that happened in December and then shame on us, we stopped doing it. But these are the same conversations over and over where we're like, okay, but what, Ugh. what is the plan? You know? So I, again, start of the episode, chalk one up uh, for the Iser plan. Um you know, there's been improvement on this team. I don't think that it is without improvement. Um, but we can get into the minutia of what truly is improvement. Does it really matter that JT Comfer is getting experience in these types of games? Andrew Kopp? David Perron? Or are we really doing all of this just to make sure that Dylan Lark and Lucas Raymond and Moritz Sider get this experience? That's fine. Come out and tell me that. I don't mind that at all. Uh, Dan B, not calling you out. All is good. No, no. not. I'm, I'm not taking offense to it. I, and I think you guys should, you know, call me out on my SHIT all the time. Um, but no, you're right. It's it's it, uh, The word choice was poor. It wasn't about depth. We need some top top six scoring. Uh, Jim Johnson signed Kane two years at five million average. That, that I can stomach... Like what's fun? Like we talk about these five million dollar contracts for the for the Red Wings right now, and man, would that not bother me? But it bothers me more because I know we have a couple other contracts we're dragging around with a couple of guys who are getting slower, and one of which has proved this year that sometimes when the going gets tough. Core surgery wasn't enough. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, um, look, this is me without my brother. I've been rambling for almost 40 minutes now. I'm pretty proud of that one. Um, just so you guys know. Uh, Jared, tell Matt last year he would be praising... Uh, <laughs> tell Matt last year, this Matt from a year ago, he'd be praising Patrick Kane. Uh, he'd literally be vomiting all over himself. I, uh, 
I don't know. My brain cannot consume that sentence, Jared. I'm sorry. I, I, for some reason, I can't read it, but I'm, I feel like I'm trying my best to get through it. Dan B, no one is perfect. No one. I'm not perfect. I said Gensel was a mistake for the Canes, and God damn, is he killing it. Kind of wish we would have traded for him, but Dan B, nailing it. Hey, this organization put, uh, a garbage company on their jersey ruined it. I've got to update this thing now. I've got my Dylan Larkin jersey. I don't, it's not, I've got to get my priority patch on. I look ridiculous walking around without my priority patch. But he's asking me, how old's that jersey? Who is it a year old? Kidding. Nobody's doing that. Okay. Um, man, we move so much slower when Mike's not here. This is crazy. All right. Standings. Where do we sit right now? Um, we have. Uh, the wing dings, uh, two points out from the Washington Capitals, 79 points with uh, 10 games to go. The Capitals with 81 points, 11 games to go. It's not done, guys. Not by any stretch of the imagination. And I think it was Decoy who brought it up earlier. You've got another game against Washington. That's the game. You lose that game, it's over. But if you could stay around and sniff the Caps, uh, you got you got a chance um so what i pulled up what's coming up next it's not looking great carolina panther i'm sorry carolina panthers we we're just talking about clowny come on i think he just signed right was a clowny that signed somebody somebody in the chat i maybe i just had a fever dream uh carolina hurricanes are welcoming your detroit red wings into town uh right now we are taking a look at jay fresh's team comparisons and guys, uh, for podcast listeners, it is ugly. Uh, the only advantage the Red Wings have is five on five goals four, which uh, Carolina is not far behind. But when it comes to uh, puck possession, when it comes to power play, um, Carolina's got it. It's just the Red Wings who can finish better. Uh, again, coming back to that low danger scoring chance shooting percentage, best in the league for Detroit. Uh, the Red Wings have a better chance of finishing. In Carolina, they have a better chance of scoring five on five. But uh, you know what? Carolina's got that puck. And and the, again, this will be fun because this is the team I wanted uh, to face in the first round, which uh, I don't know. Is there just no chance of that now? I'd have to. What, oh, you're just looking at the standings, you dumb asshole. Um, who's number one? Okay, the Rangers are number one with 100 points. Uh yeah, it does, it does kind of look like if the Wings can squeak in right now, they'd be going up against the Rangers. There is something so terribly wrong about the thought going through my head right now where I think the Rangers are vulnerable, but they're not. Like, there's just something about the history of the New York Rangers where I'm telling myself, like, we'd have a chance. But we don't. They have the goaltending they have the offense. We would get lunched. But there's something in my head right now where I'm just like, you know what? Those Rangers. Okay, so anyway, back to the Carolina Hurricanes game. Will we get a chance to even sniff the puck long enough to test out our ability to finish? Um, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Rock at a hard place, right? That's what I wanted in, in the first round of the playoffs. The last couple of weeks, I'd been explaining it when the playoffs looked more sure. Um. I thought it would be fun to kind of test this out. And then Carolina decided to go bring in a forward that's unstoppable. And uh, hell, uh, this looks like a nightmare matchup. So fingers crossed. Maybe it's just so bad. It looks so daunting of a task to win. We'll pull one out. Uh, next game is the Florida Panthers, um, who do also hold the puck quite a bit. They have a 50 goal score, but for some reason... These offensive numbers for five on five don't look great. And that's because their power play is insanely good. Fourth best power play in the league. Um, they whip the puck at the net. Uh, number two in the league for uh, attempts on net for actual expected goals. They're about in the middle of the league, but with the Red Wings being close to last. Florida Panthers are going to get the nod there. Uh, so while you have a Carolina Hurricanes game that just looks like top to bottom, uh, Carolina should dominate um, this one for. The Panthers doesn't look too far from that. But the Red Wings have this ability over the Panthers on five on five uh, to put the puck in the back of the net. So maybe you're just watching this game and hoping the Red Wings can be responsible. And if the Panthers 
kind of lean in the way of being irresponsible. The Red Wings might be able to sneak one out, but there's just so much here, so much evidence, especially looking at the, the defensive game. Carolina's number two on five, five versus five goals against. Um, number four in the league in expected goals against. Number four in the league in Corsi against. So they, they suffocate you. You can't get an attempt on net, and when you do, it's horrible. Um, fifth in the league in penalty kill, third best goaltending. Guys, it's not going to be great. Um, those are our next two games, and then I, I pulled up the April calendar. Jim Johnson, our best chance might be Tampa. Defensively, nowhere near Carolina or Florida. Too true there, Jim. Too true there. Um, I'd, I'd throw this out there if you if you guys are watching on YouTube, if you're missing it uh, again on the podcast, um, just to run through the rest of these games here. So our final 10, we just talked about Carolina and Florida. Next up is Tampa Bay. Then you've got the Rangers who look to be our first round matchup. And then you can finally like take a breath. Then you've got Buffalo, but then you've got, oh man, then you've got Washington at home, which by the way, I am 100% going to look into tickets for that. I think I'll wait till we get a little bit closer to the game, but man, that's going to be huge. Um, then you've got Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh at Toronto. Come home versus Montreal, the last home game of the season. And the very next night you are in Montreal. Montreal kind of scares me, but look, brand new throws out there. Awesome. If it comes down to the last game versus Montreal to make the playoffs, super winnable game, super winnable. There's just something about being in Montreal the last game of the season. That's like, oh man, that, that arena is going to be hot. They are going to be hot for an upset. Um, like I'm going to take a break. We'll be right back. But um, and when we get back, we'll kind of take a look at more of these conversations here uh, about what's going on uh, to run out the rest of the season. I appreciate you guys hanging around, even though it's just me today. We're almost done. We have a couple of good news things to take a look at. Uh, signing for the wing dings. Uh, Pelica playing pretty well. We'll take a look. But um yeah, it's, I mean, at least for Detroit right now in these next uh, one, two, three, four games, uh, these next five out of six games, it's rough. Um, so you take a breath. I'll take a breath. We'll be uh, we'll be right back. The action never ends at DraftKings Sportsbook, especially coming up this spring with tons of ways to bet on all your favorite sports. You can fuel, fuel your fandom and feel the heat of the season like never before. Plus, right now in DraftKings Sportsbook, we're giving new customers a risk-free bet up to $1,000. That's right. Make your first bet up to $1,000. And if it doesn't win, you'll get another shot at cash later. You can throw down on all the major action for baseball, golf, MMA, and more. Plus, with same-game parlays, spreads, money lines, over-unders, and props, your betting options feel endless. Red Wings uh, have some pretty tough games coming up. Who knows? Maybe uh, maybe that just means the odds will be that much tighter. And if you put some money down on your favorite Red Wings team to win, which I'm sure you'd all agree, you know, maybe things could go your way. Best of all, DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. You can deposit and withdraw with your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code THPN. Make your first deposit and get a risk-free bet up to $1,000. That's promo code THPN only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. All right. Uh, I am I'm back. Let me see if I can fit my noggin back on the screen here. Uh, there we go. Emmett Finney. Ladies and gentlemen, a seventh round pick has signed with the Detroit Red Wings. Um, this is, uh, I don't know. I might blow this out of proportion. I might. Look, you've got another late round pick in Elmer Soderblom that was one we were super excited about. Obviously, I'm not giving up on Soderblom. I, I love his game so much. And uh, you guys are bringing up the Griffs. Um, one went away from uh, playoff berth, I think uh, Jared mentioned earlier today on Discord. There's a couple of reasons you want. You wanted Soderblom to turn out. 
And one of those was he wasn't a first round pick. And even more so, he was, I believe, a sixth round pick. Emmett Finney signing as a seventh round pick, joining the Grand Rapids Griffins next year as a guy. And we'll just we'll we'll run through this. Um, he gets drafted from the Cam Loops. And again, I put this on Twitter. How many of you actually said Cam Loops? I every time I have to like hesitate every time I read this Cam Ploops. Huh. He gets drafted from the Cam Loops Blazers on a half a game or I'm sorry, half a point per game production rate, nine goals, 26 assists on 64 games. I I'm going to back this up a slide. Elite prospects gave Emmett Finney, who just signed with the Detroit Red Wings again, a seventh round pick and F on their NHL draft guide of 4.5 for skating, 4.5 for shooting. Um, I believe these are out of 10. Uh, five for passing, five for physical. I mean, just across the board, just middle of the row. Um, they did have a pretty nice thing to say. Always in the right place. He consistently influences the play, even without the puck. Nonstop engine powers him up and down the rink, making, him, uh, making up space to poke away pucks on the back check, force turnovers on the forecheck. He enters every battle with a couple of shoulder checks to find options and has the skill to connect. That does not line up with that grade at all, um, which is hilarious to me. It, it, it paints a very nice picture. So at the time, he had an F. Uh, Emmett keeps rolling, right? Uh, gets the uh, A, actually, on his jerseys. You can see here, if you guys are watching on YouTube, uh, for the Camp Loops Blazers. And 59 points in 62 games, ladies and gentlemen. Let's not forget uh, seven points in 14 playoff games last year. But uh, guys, I bring up the story of Elmer Soderblom again. Who doesn't want a seven foot monster on your forward side? Just being able to dipsy doodle around the competition, scare everybody. Tage Thompson his way to 50 goals. But again, little side note to all of that was it was a late round pick that could have turned out. Emmett Finney, a seventh round pick. This, I'm, I'm sorry, I might be blowing this out of proportion. This is huge. Uh, a lot of your late picks are not going to get signed. They're not going to get these chances with the Griffins. I'm not saying he's going to be a superstar with the Red Wings. But when you go up and down these draft boards and you're trying to find the sure wins you are crossing your fingers a lot so you've got to get some small tiny wins here and there and this is this might be a small tiny win but to me i don't think we have enough of those uh to celebrate like to get super excited um we have one last year but he was a first round pick uh who i want to bring up uh in uh palika but Guys, this is cool. This is good news. Emmett Finney kind of getting the upgrade here, putting the shine to himself and becoming almost a point per game player after being a half a point per game player last year, giving himself the upgrade. Um, look, I read too that uh, the team was an absolute disaster this year, so he's not really surrounded by anything. Um, but this is this is another guy that uh we had the Mazer and Razor was the sort of proposition we put out there a year ago when things were going great for him. Um, this looks like another guy that could try and play that Bertuzzi role. Um, especially the way he's described as being able, he has the skill to make those connections and then he's going to battle and shoulder check his way to get the puck possession. If you can bring that to the AHL and then continue to build up who you are and try and translate all this skill into an NHL game, that's where that comparison starts to make more sense. But right now, let's just be happy a seventh round pick signed. And again, might be blowing this out of proportion. It's not like we've never seen a draft pick signed with Detroit before, but this is this is one for me where it's like, wow, that happened quick. Wow, look at that turnaround. Wow, look at that point per game total. Like, just feels good. Feels good when you're surrounded by a lot of, uh, I don't know. Can I say not good? Can I say not good? Uh, the other thing I had uh, asked um, in the Discord earlier today was, um, 
can can you guys help me figure out um some things today uh only because i'm all alone and we got uh we got some polica news uh who, do who doesn't want to talk polica news all right pretty sure i can handle this in just filibustering until i can bring up my twitter account boop um uh, game winning goal triple overtime Pelika puts one in the back of the net um you gotta love it let's blow this up a little bit here uh you're gonna see him uh pop up here on the back end uh this is just come on find him find him between the circles I'm going to be so embarrassed when I realize it's not him. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at the wrong guy. All right, anyway, Palenka puts one in the back of the net. Um, this is exciting, right? Uh, I think uh, one of the other cool things that uh, popped up was from uh, the CHL, uh, celebrating three goals, two assists, and a trip to the CHL final 2024 this season is uh, Palenka, who's really, you know, we we know all season. This has been something we've been talking about. Uh, we've been kind of like you're, you're game planning, like where are these guys going to go moving forward? And you're kind of hoping most cider, like he has that skill level. He's, he's, he's going to elevate who's ever on the left side. Um, and we're kind of seeing, we're kind of seeing some evidence with Edvinson too. But one of the things we don't have is this guy that, you know, killing it, doing better than Victor Hedman did in the SHL putting in, um, uh, was a Victor Hedman like seven goals in his comparable season in the SHL? And Palika right now is is he at nine goals? I, I should look this up before I continue to talk out of my ass. But um, essentially, you know, anywhere this guy's going now, and uh, now in the playoffs where he's getting to show off in the CHL final, where he's headed there now, um, we're kind of like in this scramble of like, God, I need some good news. And I felt like, at least in these last couple of days, we've gotten some good Palika news. We've gotten a good seventh round pick news uh, in Finney. I just wanted to make sure we ended this episode on a good note. I wanted to talk about it with Mike, but Mike's not here. He's such a turd sandwich. But um, yeah, he's got the moves. Uh, Dan B thrown out there reminds me of uh, Quinn Hughes. I mean, that's the kind of thing, like when you're looking at these teams that are establishing themselves that look like they want to do something long term. And like I was making fun of, I'll be honest again, I was making fun of Vancouver at the start of the season. I was like, oh, cool. They're about to blow up. Let's go steal Elias Pettersson. They knew they had something with what they were building in that core. And that core included a Quinn Hughes, which man, oh, man. With Sedita <laughs> continuing to bottom out, uh, second worst uh, plus minus, which I don't care about plus minus, but it's always fun to make fun of folks. Man, oh man, would that have been nice? Um, look, I'm I'm getting tired. You guys have been listening to me talk at you for so long. I can hear my kids are acting up again. Uh, I hate ending episodes on that. Uh, you think I'd learn, but um, that's all I got today. Wish I had a better conversation for you guys. Uh, thanks for listening to me talk at you now for 53 minutes. Let's not count that ad in the middle there. Uh, thanks for coming along. Good news for Palika. Good news for Finney. Hey, we did a little bit better this year than we did last year in our big make or break game. And it's not over. It's not over. Last year, you lose those two games to Ottawa. Boom, done. We were all like, all right, get Pertuzzi out of here. Speaking of Vancouver, get Aronic out of here. We're not there. It's not as bad. I think we can all agree if there isn't another guy showing up in the top six that is of higher quality than a JT Comfer, that we're still looking at similar results next year. So we can put a finger on what we need. We don't want to see Jeff Petrie again. Although the Simon Evanson, Jeff Petrie isn't terrible. Um, like there's good things happening here. It's not over. Let's wait till that next Capitals game before we declare it over. Unless we lose every game between now and that game. It's, it's possible. Um, but yeah, look, tough one's coming up. Let's not get blown out. Let's keep her close. Don't lark, it's not hurt. Maybe one of these goaltenders will turn in a shutout, huh? Mobile Scott one in Nashville. Kind of blew it. That's okay. Um, hey, we're all Red Wings fans. Um, 
I don't know where to take that. All right. I'm, I'm obviously tired. I'm ready to go. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening to me talk at you for an hour. It's rough. But uh, hopefully I shared enough uh, of my hot takes that uh, you won't unsubscribe. All right. See you guys later. Like it real quick. Subscribe. I'll see you. Mike will be back. Doodles.